Hello, and thank you for joining us at Coalesce. My name is Sarah Leone, and I'm a solutions architect at DBT Labs. I'll be the host of this session. The title of the session is SQL the Video Game, and we'll be joined by Joseph Markowitz. All chat conversation is taking place in the Coalesce SQL the Video channel of the DBC Slack. If you're not part of the chat, you have time to join that right now. Visit getdbt.com slash community and search for Coalesce SQL the Video when you enter the space. We encourage you to ask other attendees questions, make comments, or react at any point in the channel. After the session, the speaker will be available in the Slack channel to answer your questions. However, we encourage you to ask those questions at any point during the session. Let's get started. Over to you, Joe. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sarah. I uh, appreciate the intro. All right. Happy first day of Coles, everybody, and excited to give my talk for all of you. Uh, the talk today is going to be sequel to video game, as Sarah had mentioned. Uh, if that is what you're here for, you're in the right place. Uh, excited to talk to you all about it. If it's not what you're here for, I incline you all to stay because I think you'll find it entertaining and fun. Uh, but the one line synopsis of this talk is essentially Wordle, but for data analysts. Hope that's hooked you uh, and let's get into it. So to start, a uh, few details about the presentation. Um, I'm giving the presentation. My name is Joe Markwitz, hobbyist game developer. Uh, in the Slack, if all of you are there, uh, I've got my Slack champion, Cedar the Cat, uh, the titular uh, cat of Cedar Cat Studios, aka my partner, Jess. Uh, give her a shout out. Uh, but Cedar, I mean Cedar, will be in the chat answering any questions if you have them throughout the talk. So let's go over the agenda and what I'm going to be talking about today. I'll start off with a little bit of about the dev, uh, about myself, and you know why I even like thought of making a game about SQL, who does that. Uh, next is gonna be the actual game reveal, then how it was built, how it works. What would not, like it wouldn't be a product if I didn't do a quick retro on it, so I'll do a retro, and then a little look into the future of what I want this uh, SQL game to be. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, during the day, I am the manager of the solution analytics team at Fivetran, uh, aka the DBT package team. Uh, if any of you ever you know, have worked on or used any of the DBT packages. Uh, but when I'm not working, uh, I will usually you know, like end the day. Jess in the photo here next to me uh, will make some dinner. We'll you know, have some playtime with Cedar the Cat right here. Uh, and then I'll usually close my lap, my work laptop and open up my personal one where I'll dive into game development. I've been a hobbyist game developer for a little over three years now. I've made some, you know, quirky games. Uh, it's a really fun pastime, and uh, I'm really excited to share, you know, one of those games with all of you today. I'm also a very, very proud partner. Uh, Jess, in this photo right here, um, in the midst of the pandemic, actually made a career change from, uh, you know, the realm of legal into software engineering. She was able to do a boot camp and was able to land a job as a software engineer and Honestly, truly inspirational woman, couldn't be more proud. And it's also like, you know, it's pretty cool being able to talk about some of the stuff that like we even do during work. And I've been able to, you know, help answer some SQL questions and it's been really exciting to see. So very, very proud. Uh, I'm also a very much an upset cat, obsessed cat owner. Uh, and the photo here is Cedar. Uh, he's a little kitten here, to be honest. He's gained a few LBSs over the years, but uh, that is him, uh, and very much obsessed, but essentially the culmination of all of these above, you know, me being working with DBT packages, me being a hobbyist game developer, Jess and I being able to interact more with, you know, technical, you know, conversations and just love of Cedar culminated in me actually making this video game because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I see Jess all the time playing, you know, Wordle, Duolingo, any New York Times, you know, games, and I thought it'd be really cool to be able to make something that she could play and, you know, gain some SQL skills in the process. So while I did make the game for everybody, Jess, it was mainly made for you. So without, a, you know, without further ado, let's get into the game reveal itself. So happy to announce uh, the official release of Query, the SQL daily, uh, the daily SQL game. Uh, you know, I tried to, you know, land on a bunch of different titles, but a lot of them just didn't work. You know, I tried, you know, SQL, the video game. I tried Word School, you know, Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakle. It, it, none of them worked. But Query, you know, really summarized it very well and um, is what we landed on for the name of the game. So with that, let's talk about what even Query is. Uh, so Query is a daily SQL puzzle game. It's really built to resemble games like Wordle, Duolingo, but mainly Wordle in the sense that you will have a stakeholder question 
that you'll have to come to every single day and generate a SQL query that answers that stakeholder question. You'll have five attempts to answer the question properly. And if you do, you get, you know, you see your stats, how you did, what your current streak is. Uh, if you didn't, you'll see your stats still. You'll also see the answer uh, to the query uh, so that you could still learn as time goes on. And it's really built and intended to be used as a SQL literacy game. Although I think it will be for everybody who are both skilled and newcomers to SQL. Currently, unfortunately, SQL or Query is only available on Mac OS. I am not a full-time game developer, uh, but I really do hope to support more platforms in the future. So talked enough about what it is. Let's see the game in action. So here's a quick video uh, and you'll have a little bit of Joe, uh, you know, conversation on top of it. So here I'm just creating my user. I'll be Cedar in this instance. And as the game loads, uh, you'll see that you're essentially presented with uh, some instructions on how to play the game. Uh, there's also some SQL resources that you can go to that lead to external links. Uh, here you can see, you know, I've got my stakeholder question. Show me the first name, last name of all customers who are loyalty members. I can then generate my query using, you know, the, the different pills in these uh, tables. So I'm doing select, first name, uh, last name. And then I can also just do, to finish off a statement, of from the customers table. So there we go. I'm able to easily just generate my SQL query and give it a run. Oh, shoot, I got it wrong. Um, oh, interesting. So I got a, a syntax error. So it, you can see here, if you didn't generate it properly, it produces the syntax error. I forgot my comma. Leading or trailing, doesn't matter. You can pick which one you want. Add in the comma. And OK, I got a generated result, but it's still wrong. Why is it? Ah, who are loyalty members? I need to make sure I'm only looking at loyalty members. So I can actually look at this you know, data field tooltip. And I can see this is a Boolean that indicates if they're loyalty members. So I can just do a where clause and throw in is loyalty member or is loyalty member equals true. Give it a run. And look at that, we got it right. Uh, and we can also see the results there. Once you get it right, you're then presented with, you know, an ending screen with your stats, your total attempts, your current streak. You can see the actual query used for the answer. Um, and this is essentially what you'll be doing when you're playing the game. And then tomorrow you'll be able to come back and there'll be a new, a new stakeholder question that you'll have to answer. So very excited that I was able to show all of you what Query is, but I love the details. Let's go into how it was built. So Query was built uh, in, I, I like to really break it down into like three main core components. And I'm gonna go over what those tools are within those right now. So the, four, the first one is game development. So the game development aspect of Query was built primarily using Unity, which is a game development engine. Uh, if anyone knows, you know, Unreal Engine or the Source Engine, very similar to that, but very much geared towards indie developers. I also used Vectornator for all of the vector art that you see in the game. I'm not an artist, so simple vector art was perfect. I also used Credo, which is kind of like Photoshop, but like I have no idea how to use Photoshop. So I used probably like 1% of Credo, but it was still very helpful. Uh, I also, uh, the data architecture components, it uses BigQuery, the BigQuery API and DBT. More on those later, I'm very excited to show, you know, tell the community about those. And lastly, the schema design. Uh, shout out to the folks at DBT Labs who actually created the Jaffle Shop schema, you know, years ago. Uh, Query is actually using the Jaffle Shop schema to, you know, have the stakeholder questions be asked and to actually generate the, you know, answers to those. I also use Draw SQL. I've never used it before, but it was a very intuitive way to create, you know, an evolving uh, schema in ERD. So here's just a screenshot of the Jaffle Shop. I say extended because I did add a few tables and a little bit of data, but this is essentially the schema used within Query. So how does Query work? To start off, I've been talking a lot about Unity and BigQuery. Uh, Unity, as I mentioned, is the game engine. Uh, and just think of this as like, it handles all of the user interactions and core gameplay mechanics. So when you saw me, you know, bringing my mouse, clicking the select, you know, pulling in the different pills for the fields, that is all handled within the Unity game engine. Uh, Unity will also handle all of the art and any like core logic loops. Those are built using C sharp scripts. Uh, so any logic in there, I've essentially created a C sharp script to program to do certain action. The hard part though, is that the connection between Unity and BigQuery. So when you saw me click the run query button, uh, there's actually a C-sharp script that essentially will take the compi or the, the pills that the player put together to generate the select statement into a string 
and then send that in an API call to BigQuery to then render the results in query within that table results table. That took me a long time to figure out how this like symbiotic relationship could work. Uh, but it also was quite a struggle to even just figure out, hey, how is the player right or not? You saw that it can show the, you know, if there's a syntax error, uh, it will also show you the right results, even if it's not the correct, like it'll show the output, even if it's not the correct one. And figuring out how to check if it's the correct answer was a very difficult uh, hurdle that I had to go over. And I'm excited to, you know, tell you a little bit about it in this talk. So this program that I have in the game engine is, or in the source code of the game is called answer check. Answer check essentially is what the game uses to determine if the player generated query is the correct one. So to take a little bit of a step back before we even go into answer check, how query works is that there is actually a corresponding table in a BigQuery project that contains the results of the correct answer. So essentially in BigQuery, there's a table that essentially has the output of what the right answer should be. So when the player generates their query, hits run, if it is a correct query and sends back results, the answer check program will essentially put both the table in BigQuery and the player generated results into a structured list and match them up together. If they do not match, the player is wrong. If they do match, the player is right. Uh, this took a very long time to figure out, um, but it, it, is work, it did work and it is what the game uses each time the player uh, hits run query. So let's see a uh, just quick example on the right of how this is an action with this quick sample. So let's say uh, this 10, 17, 2022 table results, I can see I've got the first name, the last name and four records of all the you know, customers or employees in this instance. However, the player generated results is first name, last name, location ID. Right off the bat, there's three columns, those structured lists aren't gonna match. Also, we seem to be missing Jess. We can't, we can't leave Jess out. Uh, so essentially answer check's gonna be like, no, these structured lists don't match, it's wrong. However, when you then have the correct list, so I've got all of the player or all of the employees in my player results, and this does match the table results in BigQuery, answer check matches them, and it goes, player is right, all good to go. So this is essentially the core uh, program used within Query to essentially check, is the player right or is the player wrong? I find this very exciting and cool though, mainly because I don't use the SQL query at all in checking if the player is right or not. So you could, in your own way, put together your own query that is completely different from mine. And as long as the output is still the same, you'll be right. Uh, so how do these tables even get into this BigQuery project? Uh, I had mentioned before that there is a DBT project and I'll talk about a little bit more later on. Well, now is that. So the tables in BigQuery are actually generated via a DBT project that lives in the source code of query. Uh, this dbt query game, which is the repo name of the project, lives within query and it actually contains a unique model for every single day. So today's query is 1017 2022. Tomorrow's is 1018, 1019, so on and so forth. The contents of that query is, or of that model is the SQL that I generated for the answer. I will then do a dbt run. It will then materialize in my BigQuery instance. And then that table essentially is a select star which, which is used in the answer check. So it'll use that table, player results, answer check matches them. Uh, and so that is essentially the contents of this uh, DBT project. I think I can confidently say, I'm not too sure though, that Query may very well be the first video game to be built actually using DBT as a core component. Uh, and not just for like data analytics on the side, but there is quite literally a DBT project within the game files of this uh, game, which I find very exciting. So let me just do a quick overview of the query of, or of the architecture of query. So here we've got the app itself using Unity uh, consistently, that's what it's built off of. Unity will then use dbt to actually produce the answer tables in BigQuery. Unity will also then hit the BigQuery API, which calls BigQuery, which then sends the results back and then does the answer check in the end. So this is the you know never ending loop that query uses for the architecture of the game. Okay, so I've, it's been a lot of fun telling you all about how, you know, the game works and, you know, why I even made it. And, you know, it wouldn't be, you know, a game if I didn't do a quick retro on it. So I want to talk about, you know, what went well and what didn't go well when making this game. So let's start with what went well. Uh, honestly, meshing data analytics and game development together worked, like, very well. 
I knew, I kind of knew this before. Like I do game jams. I make, you know, video games of like Cedar running away or something like that. And I'd always like pick up on a few things. I'm like, oh, I like, this looks familiar. And I'd like kind of pick and choose and whatnot. But actually like making a game centered around data analytics and SQL literacy worked very well together. And it was honestly very surprising and fulfilling in the end. I also focused on the core functionality before building out the game. Uh, too often, I am, I've got an idea and I'm like, ooh, okay, I'm going to you know, have this mechanic in the game. I'm going to make the art around it. Here, I pretty much just spent like, you know, I said it took me 10 months. Uh, it, it took me like seven or eight just to figure out how Query could actually, or like Unity could actually talk to BigQuery. So I quite literally looked at like a gray box for seven or eight months just trying to figure out how Unity can then, you know, send an API called it to BigQuery, get the results back. That took a very long time, but I'm glad I spent that time on it instead of working on the art because once I got that working, I had a fully functioning game and I just needed to put the art together. Speaking of the art, uh, I stuck to a very simple graphic style, just vector art, nothing too fancy. I think it, you know, serves the game well, doesn't distract too much, but also I wish I was, but I am not an artist. So being able to stick to a simple art style really helped uh, and was able to focus on my strengths. Uh, finally, you know, I'd mentioned before, I am a maintainer and developer of DBT packages, uh, and I am in the community all the time. So I love the community, and I thought, you know what, why not leverage the community uh, when, you know, making this game? So I leveraged so many Discord servers. Like, I can't even count them on my fingers. I was a part of many Discord servers that were all centered around game development, was able to be part of those communities, answer questions, ask questions, and they were very instrumental in helping me, you know, complete this game. I also had, uh, took part in Unity forums, which think like Stack Overflow, but very specific for just Unity. Uh, essentially, there were so many times though where I, you know, have a very specific question. I type it in. I see there's a Unity forum post on it. I'm then like, oh, sweet, this is awesome. I click on it. There's like 400 people following it. I'm like, oh, finally got the answer, and there's no responses. Oh, I know a lot of people have probably had the same on Stack Overflow, but that happened way too many times. But still. Unity form is really helpful. And now that I'm talking about it, I should probably go back and answer some of those ones that had no replies. Uh, I also leveraged the Google Cloud community forums for all of my you know, BigQuery API questions. And I wasn't gonna put Reddit on here, but I actually did use Reddit for two questions in particular, and I got like hundreds of replies. Mind you, not all of them were good replies or the right ones, but there were uh, there was a lot of engagement. I was able to, you know, actually complete the game with the help of some, you know, unsung heroes in those subreddits. Uh, finally, I organized a pre-launch alpha uh, for the folks that were a part of that. You know who you are. Thank you so much for, you know, supporting me and playing this game uh, before it was released in its pretty rough state. But there was a lot from that I was able to, you know, learn and figure out what worked and what didn't work. One of the most notable ones was that like data field tooltip. Uh, came out of this pre-launch alpha, as well as some other, you know, quality of life updates. Uh, we'll definitely, definitely do this again in the future. Uh, so talked about a lot of what went well. well. We should probably talk about what didn't go so well. I mentioned it before. Uh, I spent so long trying to figure out how to get Unity to like interface with rel relational database. I did not settle on BigQuery at the beginning. I actually started with Snowflake. Uh, however, Snowflake, at least when I was trying it out, could not execute post requests via their API. It was only get. And unfortunately I needed to use the post request. So fortunately I couldn't use it. Uh, next was Firebase, which, wow, I've never used Firebase before. It is so cool. Um, I will 100% use Firebase in the future uh, for future game development. It's a very intuitive way for how games usually interact with databases, uh, but it's more of an unstructured data store and not a relational database. So wanting to put together legit select statements unfortunately didn't work. Uh, next, I tried to self-host my own MySQL or Postgres database. Uh, I have no idea how to, you know, spin up my own servers or host any of that. So unfortunately, like, maybe I'll look into that in the future, but I just, it was too much of a hurdle, couldn't figure it out. Uh, deep cut here, but uh, some people did tell me to try and look at DuckDB. I did, in fact, look at DuckDB and did actually get uh, a version of it to work within the game. Uh, there is in fact a .NET framework for like C-sharp that DuckDB has that you could leverage. However, at the time it was a little too late in the game and I already built it around BigQuery, but I think DuckDB might be an interesting one to you know, focus on in the future. Uh, some other things uh, I encountered was NuGet packages, which 
think of like PyPy with Python, but NuGet is like for the .NET framework. I had to use a lot of external ones, so not supported by Unity that actually ended up corrupting the entire game files uh, twice. I had to essentially start over from scratch, but it was good because then I was able to, you know, take what I learned, build from the ground up. But I did have to fork and customize some of them. When, you know, I wish I didn't have to do that. I spent a lot of time as well, like literally up until today, trying to work on new fe like features in the game. Uh, I wish I just like addressed the bugs and then just kind of like, you know, was good to go from there. But I, you know, kind of went up to the wire a little bit there. Uh, finally, attempting to make query compatible with Mac, uh, more platforms than just Mac OS. It is so much more difficult, especially with like server and client uh, interactions that I just did not know. And Xcode with, you know, Mac OS was really intuitive. So I was able to get it to work pretty easily, but I hope to support more in the future. Speaking of the future, let's talk about the future of query. So uh, right off the bat, uh, some features and support I want to mention. Uh, I plan to have three months of Jaffle Shop daily questions and queries. After those three months, I kind of want to see how are people playing the game? What is some feedback? Maybe I'd make some adjustments. Uh, additionally, like I'm saying three months of Jaffle Shop support. I do also want to think of, you know, maybe doing Jaffle Shop extended, extended, or adding some more data sets just for greater query variability. Uh, I also definitely want to, expand to more platform support. So iOS, Android, iPad, WebGL, Windows. Uh, I'd also love to implement new challenges. So, you know, this is really great for SQL literacy and newcomers. However, I would love to maybe have a little bit higher challenge level for, you know, people that are very well versed in SQL. I actually had a whole CTE, you know, feature built in, but uh, maybe for the future. Finally, I would love to see increased community engagement. I've mentioned this many times before. I love working within the community. The community is great. And I thought, what better way than to like have a community aspect of this game? So without further ado, the final point here, uh, all of you watching right now, even the folks watching the stream on recording, you in the future, you can be part of Query. Uh, Query was actually built true to help with SQL literacy, but I also wanted to encourage community contributions. Uh, in fact, I went pretty meta and the DBT Query game is a public repository that I actually made to be a DBT package. So what I'd love to do is for folks to be able to install this, you know, DBT query game, which is used in the game itself, install the package. You can then see the Jaffle shop data, construct your own queries in your warehouses, and then actually open up a PR and your, for your own question. That question could then be a future, you know, stakeholder question. And you can, you know, help facilitate the community, help others get better at SQL and also be an open source contributor yourself. Um, so that is something that I would love for all of you to do. Did make it a DBT package so you could all, you know, be part of that. Also open features and issues, uh, and the like. Um, I also have a PR here, uh, which see to the cat, if you're in the chat, if you want to go ahead and drop these links on in for the repo and the PR, you can see a quick example of how, uh, you can submit a PR for a future query. So with that, uh, that is the end of my presentation. I'm so very fortunate to have been able to tell you all about query and, Here's a you know recreated GIF of Cedar tapping on the keyboard, and we'll be happy to answer any questions in the chat. Thanks so much, Joe. I am so excited to play, um, and thanks uh, for a great presentation. Uh, if you'd like to join the Q and A with our speaker, stay in the Coalesce SQL the video channel in our community Slack and submit your questions and comments. If not, the next session titled "Efficient is the New Sexy: A Minimalist Approach to Growth." We'll start at noon CDT or 6 p.m. Irish summertime. I hope to see you there.